great to great to be here. Thanks, Nancy and Loyola for organizing this great meeting. Um, it's good to be back in the U.S. I live in Rome, um, and I spent a couple of years living here in the U.S. But a couple of days ago, when I landed here in the U.S., I three days ago landed in New York, and the immigration officer asks, what do I do? What do I do for a living? Why am, why am I here in the U.S.? And I reply, I work for the Global Catholic Climate Movement. When he heard the word Catholic bundled with climate, he, his face just went crazy, really outraged. He replies back, isn't the church in the business of saving souls rather than saving, saving the climate? So this was a very troublesome welcome to this country. And, and, and this <laughs> makes me think a lot in Gina's presentation yesterday. Um, it's, well, just to stress how concerning it is, how polarized it, the politics and debate are in this country. Um, I'm really sorry about that. And actually, he, he, he adds afterwards, and uh, he checks my passport, and I'm Argentinian, he says, oh, I see you're Argentinian, like the Pope. This Pope is too liberal. So, that, that was not the best start, uh, but anyways, um, that was kind of an interesting welcome. Um, I, I will not talk too much about um, health, I mean health impacts specifically, we heard great presentations already. It's crystal clear how bad climate change is for human health. I'll just say a word on on what the Pope has to say and what the Laudato Si Encyclical has to say on, on this issue. I'll just say a word quickly on lo lots of the impacts we, we heard today, this morning. Uh, it's the poor who are the front lines. It's the poor, uh, and this is something that the Pope stresses and emphasizing, uh, emphasizes in this encyclical letter. That Laudato Si Encyclical, it's, it's a it's a letter, a document that Pope Francis published in 2015, which was a groundbreaking document. It's the first time they, that the Catholic Church has a, such a high level teaching document from a Pope on ecology, care for our common home. And one of the themes he stresses really strongly is how the, the poor are the first ones to, to be dealing and, and suffering from all these inputs. And here to say a word of my personal experience, my, my, a couple of years ago I had the chance to travel to the Philippines. Um, this is a picture I shot uh, in an island in, near Cebu, which is one of the areas that was most heavily impacted by a super typhoon called Haiyan or Yolanda. It was a massive typhoon, devastated the Philippines, I believe um, it, it was the exact death toll is not really accurate, but it's around 10,000 people who were, kill, who were killed. I believe it's around 11 million who were displaced. It was a massive super typhoon, and all these massive casualties, all these people, most of them, overwhelming majority, were poor. And it was then when I heard for the first time this concept of climate justice, that these impacts are so unjust. It's the, the overconsumption of all of us, <coughs> the North especially, uh, are having a heavy toll on the poor and on the South. But it's not only the South, as we heard, it's, only, it's also here in the U.S. I mean, we had all these extreme weather, weather events in the last couple of months here in this country, so it's not only there. But I, the Pope is, he enshrined this, probably one of the most famous quotes from his encyclical is this quote. Uh, he calls us to hear both the cry of the earth and the cry of the poor. He, he links the environmental crisis uh, closely with, with the social crisis and with the poor. Um, he invites us to, to see these two calls as one call. Um, so I'll, I'll just, that, that's to say what the Pope has to say on this particular issue. Um, but I'd like to spend more time talking about the Pope's call to action. What can we do about this? We heard about how bad it is. Uh, we heard about the importance of adaptation. Uh, we need to start preparing for this impact. But the Pope is also calling us for aggressive mitigation. We need to transform, uh, we need to tackle uh, aggressively and ambitiously the climate crisis. So uh, the cyclical is mostly a call to action. 
the Pope doesn't want us to reflect a, on the ecological crisis he wants and the climate crisis he wants us to take action immediately. There's a very strong sense of urgency in the encyclical. And, and the Pope, you can say that the encyclical is, the, the call to action is, happens in three dimensions. And we see this as, as a spectrum, from an internal transformation to an external transformation. Um, first, he, he calls us to, to transform our hearts. That he frames the climate crisis as ultimately a moral crisis, an ethical crisis. So beyond doing all the technical work that we need to do, ultimately, we need to transform our hearts. Um, then he talks about lifestyles. We, we, need, we need to transform the way we live and shrink our footprint. And lastly, we need to change public policy. We need to change, and we, we need to get the governments and corporations to do what they're supposed to do. Um, a quick word on each of these dimensions. So the first one regarding transforming our hearts. Here, Pope Francis, is, uh, he uses this concept of an ecological conversion, which is a concept originally coined by uh, John Paul II. Um, and this is about both a spiritual transformation and uh, educational transformation. We need to trans we need to instill ecological virtues uh, among the yeah, African society. Um, and I want to mention, and here we have St. Francis of Assisi in the slide, uh, St. Francis, Francis of Assisi, say from the 13th century, is portrayed as, as a model of that integral ecology of what we should be doing in terms of how we relate to nature, how we relate to creation. Um, I want to mention two quick examples that are relevant for this audience today, or this, this venue, um, in terms of practical ways of how we could do that. So I would like to mention, first there's a wonderful ecological um, Ignatian exam and an ecological exam that the Jesuits prepared, and Ignatian Solidarity Network. So we're in a Jesuit school today, and the Jesuits have a interesting tradition with the exam. Uh, I think just a couple of months ago, this ecological exam was put together. It's a nice resource to, to undergo this ecological conversion. So I, I just wanted to make sure you check it out. Um, and another nice example of what could be done, um, I want to mention also the Archdiocese of Chicago is a sponsor of this conference. The Archdiocese, for example, is organizing a spiritual retreat, an Earth Day retreat, on Earth Day, April 22nd. So I just want to mention that there are nice uh, opportunities and resources to undergo this ecological conversion. <laughs> Second, the Pope is calling us to transform our lifestyles. And here is about, there's this nice quote, less is more, as simple as that. The Pope is calling us to challenge the materialistic culture we have. Um, he's calling on us to Transform the way we live to live more simply on one side and more sustainably. We need to trans this, and this applies both uh, to every one of us as individuals, as families, but also as institutions. I know that Loyola is doing great work to transform its footprint and, and undertake ambitious uh, renewable energy measures, energy efficiency measures, food waste, etc. So that's what we should be doing, all of us, in our institutions and in our homes. Uh, and the Pope emphasizes how important it is. Um, and lastly, the third dimension is this one of engaging in the public sphere, trying to transform public policies. We need governments to enact bold policies immediately, yesterday. Uh, we cannot wait, in this country specifically, you cannot wait four years or three more years. You need to start, and so given that the federal level is stuck, all the energy needs to be happening at the local level, local as the state level. So the Pope is really calling for action at, at also at this front. Um, I want to emphasize, and regarding that we cannot wait for more years, there's quite a lot of talk about the year 2020 being the climate turning point. So the, the, the curve of, curve of greenhouse gas emissions has been on the rise, Recently it started plateauing, but last year it again increased. We cannot afford for this curve of carbon emissions to continue to grow. We really need it by 2020, the latest, to start decreasing. Um, and we're pretty far from that happening. And this just stresses the urgency, the climate. The scientific community is shouting at us, urging us to take action immediately. 
And the Pope embraces this urgency. The, the, the word urgent is throughout the encyclical. It's, it really is an urgent call to action. And so in terms of what need, this is an invitation to mobilize. We heard Gina McCarthy yesterday doing a, a rousing call to action, a, trying to influence in the political system. It's up to citizens to influence politicians to do the right thing. Actually, Pope Francis has some strong words here. I, I want to mention this quote. Uh, he says that cowardice and defending Mother Earth is a grave sin. So it's not only about not harming the environment, it's also about not being cowards in defending the environment. And as we know, there, there's severe attacks happening on the environment right now uh, on our common home on the planet. Um, I want to mention here another practical example. Uh, right after Earth Day, uh, here in the Illinois level, uh, the Archdiocese of Chicago, and not only the, all the Catholic Diocese of Illinois are coming together with the Sierra Club, environmental group, um, Faith in Place, which is an interfaith group. I just learned this yesterday. I wanted to mention this is a wonderful example of what all of us can do. I hope that a big fraction of this audience joins this lobby day uh, in the capital, in the state capital, on April 26th. Um, there's also, and in terms of, of making a strong stance of being prophetic in terms of denouncing the fossil fuel industry, a very concrete campaign that everybody can join is the fossil fuel divestment campaign. May I ask how many people are familiar with the divestment campaign? So quite a lot, that's great. So the fossil fuel divestment campaign is calling on all types of cat of institutions, faith-based, uh, secular, I mean all healthcare institutions, um, cities, etc., to stop investing in fossil fuel corporations. We know that 80% uh, of the problem, the climate problem, is the burning of fossil fuels. It's immoral to continue investing in those companies. Um, so, and here I heard that there's an interesting move by, by students uh, calling on Loyola University to divest from fossil fuels. How wonderful it would be if Loyola divested. I mean, if we really take seriously what we heard this morning, all these presentations, and Gina's presentation yesterday. Yeah. I really hope that this conference can catalyze more money, more momentum into this campaign. And, and I really hope that there are lots of Jesuit institutions that are already starting to divest. There are a few already. I uh, know that there are very uh, significant conversations happening with many others. So I hope that here uh, some momentum. And it's up to the community, it's the local community here in Loyola to take it up, to organize and call on, on the university to divest. So, and also interestingly, it's not only about Loyola and the, the universities, it's all types of institutions. For example, I heard that also the Archdiocese, there's a campaign that parishes calling, raising this issue in, here in the Archdiocese, so how interesting that would be as well. Um, and lastly, just to mention a, a quick plug on, on the Laudato Si pledge, just to mention a, a practical way of trying to do all of, all of the above, all the three things I mentioned, I just mentioned. There's this campaign, the Laudato Si pledge, which is a very nice, simple campaign uh, to raise awareness about the Laudato Si encyclical, the Pope's message, and provide practical tools and resources to put it into action. Um, the, the pledge is a very simple pledge. It's what you see there on the screen. It's the, the text is a commitment to, to take action in these three dimensions I mentioned. First, to pray for and with creation. Um, second, to live more simply and sustainably. And second and third, to advocate, to raise our voice, to protect our common home, uh, which are those three dimensions that we mentioned earlier, uh, in terms of the heart, the lifestyle, and, and the public sphere. So I'll stop there. I I'll just want to end. I loved Gina's presentation yesterday and today, this morning, it was also mentioned the importance of hope that we, despite the climate crisis being really scary, really big, really frightening, um, the Pope wants to emphasize that there is a lot of room for hope. We, we know, and the Pope coming from the Christian tradition, Christians by definition are people of hope. Uh, Christians know that the cross 
is overcome by resurrection, that, the, that death is overcome by life. And the Pope believes strongly that human beings can overcome this crisis, can step up to this challenge. It's not too late. It's, it's quite late. It's, it's quite late. But, <laughs> but there is room, and, and, and human beings, by, by, by people that are intrinsically good, they are, are ready to step up to this challenge. Um, and he says that really a lot, much can be done. So I'll stop there. Thank you a lot, and I'm looking forward to it.